Well, faculty, at this point in the game, you're almost finished with this workshop, and I congratulate you on that. I hope you're enjoying it. Throughout this workshop, you've been going through various different lessons. That's an actual activity that you can have in Moodle. What I'm referring to are these links that you've been clicking on that are a series of pages. And they have these blue buttons at the bottom that allow you to advance to the next page. I'm going to ask for your feedback on this, whether or not you've liked it, in a feedback form at the end of this workshop. If it is something that you liked, and you find that it's going to be appropriate for your instruction, I'd like to give you step-by-step -step tutorial on how you could add a lesson to your course for your students. So, just like anything else, you're going to click Turn Editing On to add to your page. Then you're going to go to the spot where you want the lesson to show up and click Add an Activity or Resource. Activities are at the top, resources are listed at the bottom. A resource is kind of like an informational absorb activity, and an activity is interactive. And a lesson is certainly interactive, so it's considered an activity. So if you just click on the radio button and click Add, just like any other activity in Moodle, you're going to see this page where you get to choose some different settings. I'm not going to go through every single setting. Some of them you know about already, and others are just not as important and we're just going to leave them for a later date. But you're going to want to give the lesson a name. So let's suppose I wanted to do a lesson on the id, ego, and superego. You can give a time limit by clicking enable and changing the time. But I'm not going to give a time limit. You can give a due date. You already know how to do that from 1-9. Maximum number of answers means you have different questions in a lesson, and depending on how the student answers the question, if it's multiple choice or whatever, they'll be directed to a different page that you create. So there's different learning paths that are created, which is why this is considered a differentiated learning activity. So I would say don't limit yourself. I don't know why they don't just make this unlimited. So choose a high number so that you have the opportunity to put in various different options for questions. Just like any other activity, you can choose how many points you want to grade this on. Retakes. If you want the student to be able to retake the lesson, you're going to click yes. If not, no. This is important because in some cases, you, might, you really might want the student to be able to retake. For example, the beginning, I had an introductory lesson in this workshop. Depending on how you answered the question of whether or not you had foundational knowledge of Moodle, a different screen came up. One screen allowed you to advance to Module 1. Another screen told you to contact me for basic training. If you answered no and you got basic training, I would like you to be able to go back and then click yes so that you'd be able to move on to Module 1. Since that was a conditional activity, you wouldn't have been able to if you weren't allowed to retake. So there's definitely times that you're going to want that. If you do choose that, you're going to want to choose if you want the grade for the lesson to be an average of the different grades that the student gets every time he or she takes the lesson, or if you want it to be the maximum grade. So if you get a 50 the first time and a 100 the second time, should you get a 75 or should you get a 100 since that was your highest score? So that's something to think through. Number of attempts, if they're allowed to retake, how many times? Just once? 10 times? I don't want to think through that too. The progress bar. This kind of reminds me of when you're taking a survey and the researchers are trying to get a high response rate so they're trying to kind of motivate you and encourage you to continue on in the survey and finish it out by having a progress bar that says you're, you've you've completed 60 percent of the survey and you think to yourself well if I've already gone through 60 percent I might as well sit through the other 40. Well, this is kind of the same concept it tells the student what percentage of of the lesson they've completed already. So you can decide whether or not you want that. 
So you can make it a conditional activity, which you've already seen in a previous lesson how to do that. So I'm just going to go save and return to course. And here it is. And of course if I wanted to move it around I could. But we'll just keep it there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now I'm only going to show you content pages and question pages. That's what we're going to focus on in this workshop. So when you click on the actual link that you created. Now let me just go back and show you that if you want to edit those settings at any time you can do that just by clicking this update button and then this quick title is just going to allow you to change the title of your lesson. So anyway, just want to remind you of that. So let me just click on this and this is how we're actually going to build the lesson. I'm going to start by adding a content page so let's say that first I wanted to do the id. So I'm going to name page title id. Then I could write about it. I could put a video, whatever. And then this is asking me what buttons I want at the bottom. So I want a next page button. And this is telling, asking me what I want to name it. So I'm just going to put ego there. So now we'll create a content page for the ego. Just by going to this drop down add a content page then I'm going to say next page and then this time I'm going to name it um, verification because I'm going to do a question page but then also I want a button for the previous page so the student can go back and read more about the id if they want to so I'm going to do previous page and the name of that was id so that's what the button will be named. So with this drop down now I'm going to say question and I'm going to say multiple choice question page and it's just simply going to say name of it verification Now this is just kind of a dumb example. I'm not saying that this is a good question by any means, but just for the purposes, um, instructional purposes here, just to show you how this works, I'm just doing that. So for the answers, possible answers, remember I chose that there could be up to eight, but I'm only going to need two. So I'm just going to say if the student answers yes, then they could end the lesson. Now probably going to want to do a super ego page, but again, just for demonstration purposes, they can end the lesson. If they answer no, they can't end the lesson, I'm actually going to put them onto the previous page. I'm sorry, the next page. And they're going to get a zero if they say no, and they'll get a 100 if they say yes. And remember, in the settings page, I said that I was scoring them up to 100, so they're getting the max score for saying yes. So I'm going to hit save page. Now I need to create one more content page because I did say that if they said no it was going to advance them on to another page so we need to give another page. So I'm just going to put something stupid like stop by my office on Friday to discuss Freud's theory. And then I'm going to say OK. Then they can end the lesson. And the button name will just be End. So now that we've created all those pages, let's see what this lesson looks like. Use the breadcrumb. All right, so id, advance, ego, advance. Now if I say no, I'm going to get this message. But if I say yes to this question, I marked yes so I can finish the lesson. So you can see why this is considered differentiated learning. Because you're able to direct students to different pages depending on the way that they answer questions.
So why don't you try this out in your practice shell? And then you're, you're nearing the end of this workshop. Just go in, give me some feedback. Um, don't forget that you can post in the Q&A if you have any questions about, about the lesson activity or about anything that you've seen here in this workshop. Alright, thanks so much for watching.